We just went live, or at least we're preparing to. All right, coming back to Zoom. There we go. All right, well, welcome everyone. Um, Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Morning. All right, we'll, we'll take roll call this morning. Uh, morning. <clears throat> morning. 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 Right, we'll, we'll take roll call this morning. Morning. Uh, Ready? Yes. Morning. Okay. Roll call this morning. Mr. Martin. Ready? Yes. Okay. Mr. Martin is not here. Ms. White. Here. Mr. Serrano. Here. Mr. Gruber. Here. Mr. Mandela. Serrano. Here. Mr. Gruber. Here. Mr. Hyer. Mandela. Here. Ms. Petrella. Here. Ms. Romito. Present. <clears throat> Dr. Nichols. Here. Ms. Romito. Present. Mr. Pierce. Here. Okay. All right. So the first thing you got to do is you got to put yourself Here. on mute. Here. Because we keep hearing All reverb. Right. So the first thing you got to do is put yourself on mute. Because we keep hearing reverb. So the first thing you gotta do is put yourself on mute. Wow. We keep hearing reverb. So the first thing. Patty, put yourself on mute, please. There, I just did it for you. Patty, put yourself on mute, please. There, I just did it for you. Patty, put yourself on mute, please. Christy, do you have any idea how do we get rid of all this background stuff? I think if, I think if you, uh, on your YouTube stream, if you cut the, the um, sound on that. On your YouTube stream, okay. if you cut the, the um, sound on that. On your YouTube stream, okay. if you cut the, the um, sound on that. On your YouTube stream, okay. if you cut the, the um, sound on that. There we go. All right. Hopefully that'll take care of everything. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen with the agenda on it. Okay. I can find the agenda. Hold on just a second. We're all learning new tricks, right? All right, can everybody see the screen? Good. All right. So the second thing would be, I've added a couple of things. Here's the agenda. Uh, second thing would be to approve the agenda. We have the minutes, we have new business, these pieces of new business. Uh, Lou provided three things. Um, Mr. Martin provided a couple of things. Ms. Petrella pr provided a couple of things. So, uh, if I have a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion. Is that Keith? Second. Yeah, I sorry, I'm losing my voice. Second. Bob Grover seconds. Any discussion on what we want on the agenda? Christy? Can't hear you. Hold on one sec. <laughs> it's on mute. Okay, we're good then. Yep. Okay. Ms. Petrella. Yes. Um, if I can add something, I don't know if it falls under new business, old business. I want to just at the very end or whenever briefly speak of workforce development and what the Chamber of Commerce is doing. I have you under new business, the second item. I don't right have here. my glasses on. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> no 
with these old eyes. Sorry. No, I got you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so are we good for roll call? Please. Okay. <clears throat> Where are we at here? Mr. Veers? Yes. Mr. Gruber? Yes. Ms. Petrella? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Romito? Is she there? Mr. Serrano? Yes. Ms. White? I may have to take her off mute. I saw her nod her head. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we got you. Okay, I lost my picture, but I'm, I can hear. All right. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but. The next item is the minutes from February 25th. Here. Here are the minutes from February 25th. Take a look at those, see if there's anything that you want amended. And we've incorporated all of those ideas into our um, into our joint statement, and we submitted the joint statement as required by ORC. Motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve. A second. Who is second? Patty. Gotcha. Discussion? Christy, roll call, please. Ms. White? Aye. Mr. Gruber? Yes. Ms. Petrella? Yes. Mr. Veers? Aye. Yes. Ms. Romito? Mr. Serraldo? Yes. Dr. Nichols, Rabbi. Okay. Yes, I got to go back here to there, and then to here, and then to there, and then to there. All right, we're back. All right, so the first item uh, that was brought up by Mr. Martin was he wanted to ask the business community about the economic impact of COVID-19, particularly on internships and those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, your feedback. Uh, I can comment. Uh, internships were uh, discontinued. Uh, because most of the interns were university students. So they were uh, either on a virtual feed if they're working and estimating, but on job sites, uh, it was our best practice not to uh, involve them on the job site. So yes, there was what I would call an impact. Okay, others? Well, I think that, I mean, they definitely had to impact them because I know uh, even my granddaughter had a uh, internship at the university where she's graduating from, and that was all put on hold because they closed the campus, so all that type of stuff. So when the work winners, that many million people on unemployment, uh, the internships and apprentice programs all have to suffer, will usually suffer in one way or another. When do you, um, all right, this is looking into a crystal ball. What are we thinking in terms of the return of any of these kinds of opportunities? Will there be a return? Speaking, speaking for my industry, uh, Yes, uh, it has started here just this past week uh, with an intern beginning here in the office. And 
uh, two in Columbus. Uh, so from the university standpoint, it's an interesting comment because uh, the course that I teach in the fall, we're going to do a hybrid and um, it's a senior level class. And again, there's interns and there's uh, uh, senior projects that have to be melded into it. So the new world is that will uh, social distance in August. And then we will have um, smaller class settings for the teams towards the end of the semester, depending on how the information is fed to us from the Department of Health. So for example, in, in my course, there's 14 weeks of instruction, and then we'll have three weeks of uh, uh, class projects with a presentation. The presentation will probably be the most unique thing, whether it's virtual or live will be yet to be determined. So I kind of both sides of the coin from business as well as uh, on, on the secondary ed, or excuse me, college level. I'm not sure about what's going to happen in secondary ed. That's a that's a, probably a much larger conversation. Anybody else have any feedback with regard to the economic impact of COVID-19 on internships, apprenticeships, et cetera? Okay. Uh, next item is workforce development. Laura, you wanted to take a few minutes? Yes, thank you, Todd. Um, so we've talked a little bit about this in the past at various meetings, but I feel this is vital for the Chamber of Commerce to help assist lead the way in this. And what does that mean? It means we have created on our Chamber website a button that should go live on our homepage that talks about workforce development through partnerships, collaborations, students, businesses. So broken down into a nutshell, there are five different categories that we've created. Employer resources with lots of links, lots of information, um, employment services, job postings, job fairs, employment services, technology, other resources. Cuyahoga Falls Young Professionals for our emerging, soon to be new business leaders, existing business leaders, and then education. And I'm gonna come back to that. And um, also the Entree New Program through Woodridge and then interns and mentorships. So under education, both school districts are listed with content, which is evolving. But with uh, Cuyahoga Falls City Schools specifically, it talks about the partnership similar to what's on the city, the uh, school, uh, city school website. And it goes into a little bit of a great detail. Woodridge then talks a little bit about the Entrepreneur Program, which uh, we'll be launching here soon with our business community students. And then uh, we have a little information about the Chamber Foundation as that pertains to scholarships. Um, I'd like to add the foundation, the school's foundation alumni association to this. Um, and then again, the link on entrepreneur and then the interns and mentorships on that specific link. I want to do more. I want, to, I want our businesses to be able to go in and somehow connect. I don't know how, what, how that looks like or what a lot can come of that link, um, specifically under internships when a business sees this and says, oh gosh, yep, I can do that. And then they have some guidelines assistance and then mentorships as well. So um, this should be launching in the center of the chamber web page. When you go to our page, it should be front and center. It's a great work in progress. Um, I am so open to ideas, thoughts, suggestions from all of you. Um, this will create an entire campaign around this in our community because, I, again, I think it's important to keep us connected, the business community and education. So thank you, Todd. Any questions? Laura, when is it going to go live? It should be by the end of this week, if not early next week. The, um, the hospital is also on there. The library is on there. Um, the city is on there. Interesting. How does the city fit in? Well, the mayor's youth advisory is so vital. These are up and coming students that will continue to connect to our business world. And what he's doing is wonderful for those students. What do you, 
what do you need from me slash us? Um, once it's live, I want you all to take five minutes and a cup of coffee, look at it and tell me it looks great or, oh gosh, you're really missing this or that. I need extra sets of eyes on it. I've sent it to five or six different business leaders across town and so far so good they like what they see, but I think it's important that this group also have a hand in it and, you know, look at it and tell me what's missing or what we need to what look, needs to look better. I think I have the email that you, that I can share that, that you sent to me, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that it has, so there's more information that's been added. Um, the library makerspace is a big part of our community as that ties to students and education and businesses. But um, what is workforce development? It is considered an interconnected set of solutions, resources to meet employment needs. Workforce development can include partnerships, collaborations, changes to culture, changes in attitudes, changes to people's potential that help positively influence a business future success. Business and student. I mean, there's it's a work in progress. So, and what I'd sent you was a sort of a baseline template. Okay. Um, let's see. You should be all be able to see it right now. This is it. And I've recently um, added the hospital um, and because of the things uh, Kathy and the hospital do to continue to educate. Is there any one of these links that you want me to hit on? Um, nothing that I can think of right now, um, but it, it'll be, it'll look much better once it's up you know, in the different blocks and designed. And I've seen the first design, we're just go a little bit back and forth right now. But how does everybody feel about this? I personally, I love it. I'm more that we can link back and forth with one another through our website, through your website and others, the more uh, people have the opportunity to put their eyes on it and take advantage of it. And also, I feel too the awareness that we stand behind this, that we continue to partner and collaborate with both our districts. There, there are people that don't have that don't know that. And I think that once this really gets out there and they see and they have kind of that aha moment, well, wow, that's great. Oh my gosh, I own a small business. I should be, you know, maybe offering internships or how can I collaborate? Maybe I can go in and speak to us, you know, the classes, whatever that looks like. I think awareness is going to be a big part of this. Other input, please. Well, I think I want to thank Laura for putting this together, and I think it's a great idea because we've been saying all along, ever since this, well, ever since the Alliance Group met, that we have to get businesses more involved, and this is just another step towards that goal. Thanks, Laura. You're yeah, I do. I just apologize. I'm I'm doing the Zoom on my iPhone, so it's hard for me to read stuff, even with my glasses on. So, but it looks really good. And you said this is going to be on the uh, chamber website at the end of the week? Hopefully by the end of this week, if not early next week. And it's going to be when you get on our website, right in the dead center, there's this quote, and then my name, we're pushing that off to the right. And this is going to be the first thing that you see. Okay. And I, um, I share and share from our website all day long, like many of you outwards on social. And this is going to be very, this is vital. This is going to be a big part of what we're doing. The only su suggestion that I might make, and maybe you've already con uh, contacted Tom up at SCG Pool, you know, because he has that great program going on, a, a, a apprentice program, actually, where he pays, I guess, college tuition for two years or something, that's for a, associate degree. So that's a good point, Bob. And you know what? I should, I will put under internships, mentorships, apprenticeships. And we can link that.
Good thoughts. Others? It looks good, Laura. I would obviously seen it before because I added to it. I think it's good. Um, I, Laura, I just sent you two suggestions in the chat box of two other organizations that I think should be li linked back to this as well. Thank you. I got it. I will absolutely add them. Thank you. Um, Open M and United Way for classes and employment services. Thank you, Kathy. I can't see it, but it sounds wonderful. I would think maybe Stark Tech with, uh, maybe you should bring this to the next Alliance meeting and let us hash it out there also. Sure, that, that's also a good point. Um, at that point, it should be up on our website and um, I can share that ahead of time and then let everybody, because I'm so open to suggestions. A lot, you know, it takes a lot of eyes and a lot of brains in a project like this. Well, that's a good idea, Bob. And we can share what our business partnership link looks like on our website. And, uh, and Laura can share what, what the chambers looks like, compare, contrast, those kinds of things. I'm sure that uh, Shelly and, and Mary Jane would have some input on this too, you know, since they're highly in the, the, the technical education. And, and Stark is on here. I was gonna echo Bob's uh, comments. It's well done, Laura. Thank you. And uh, would would definitely uh, add uh, add it to the alliance uh, agenda so that we can start getting other companies to to look at it. Uh, but one other point to this is back to the school itself is how does that dovetail with um, career education in both the middle middle school and the high school, or how do we incorporate uh, the, either the counselors or administrative staff at the at the schools into this same uh, uh, setting. I'm struggling with words, Todd, but trying to figure out the best way that this website could be uh, incorporated with the education curriculum, if it can be. I, that's something outside my realm, but at least it's a suggestion. I, I love that. And I think once it's up and operational, I think at that point, if Todd could share it with the teachers somehow, let the teachers look at it because they're on the front lines with our students in education. Let them look at it and say, oh my gosh, I love this. Or, oh my gosh, we totally missed X, Y, Z because that's another set of eyes who are going to look at it very differently. And we need that. Uh, and as we start to go down the road of design and development of a six or 12 building, you know, this, that, Right. All bits um, and my vision for the for the building as I've shared with all of you is that one of the one of the wonderful things is our our uh, sixth seventh and eighth graders will have access to our um, uh, to our career tech opportunities that they don't really have access to today All right. Anything else on this topic? All righty. Next topic would be um, something that Lou brought up. How can the uh, business community support the strategic plan 2019-2024? What are you thinking here, Lou? Baby steps. <laughs> I think I think it's um, it's always uh, heartening to be able to say, "Hey, I, let's let's think big picture." But frankly, uh, I think the incorporation of workforce development underlines the strategic plan. So what I was thinking about was, and it's uh, maybe it's happens chance that how do you incorporate businesses with a number of different uh, users or participants, if you will, whether it be at the middle school and the high school with the students themselves and, and the businesses, or as Laura has done with, a, with this website so that the counselors and the teachers have access to information that they can pass along to the students as well as the parents. I mean, I'm trying to cover a lot of topics, Todd, and not try to dive too deeply, but I think in baby steps, 
uh, we as the BAC may need to just kind of pick one or two items uh, a quarter and try to maybe focus on that. And this is probably the best place as any is just the communication. And I, again, my thanks to Laura for pulling this together. Your comments, Lou, will dovetail right into our 2020, 2021 uh, plan. Um, as you can see uh, in old business, that's the number right. one item. And if we remember, um, ORC requires a plan to be submitted by September 30th of each year. And this group meeting quarterly means we'll meet again in August. And that'll be the only time that this group will meet prior to September 30th. Now we'll have the opportunity with um, the larger group, the Alliance to have some input. But if I, if the homework that I would ask this group to do is pull up our strategic plan from the website, from our website. And I think it's in, um, I think the best place to go would be in focus area three. Now you certainly can go to any one of the focus areas, but primarily focus area three, I think that one is Black Tiger Family. Um, and it would be there that I think we would have a lot of community outreach. We might also wanna to go to focus area one, which is student success. Um, so those two areas, if you'd review those pieces prior to our next Alliance meeting, which will be the second Tuesday in June, I'm pulling up the date here off the top of my head, second Tuesday in June is June 9th. So that'll be our next Alliance meeting. And sounds like we got a couple of things on the agenda already. Um, with regard to the plan and with regard to uh, the websites, Chamber and, and school district. Are there initial thoughts from any from the group uh, regarding um, supporting the, the strategic plan? Okay. Patty, any thoughts? Um, I think it's a good idea to look at the strategic plan and see where, you know, the businesses could help and, and um, aid and just to get a discussion going on those. Yeah, from my perspective, what I'm trying to do is, I mean, we have, we have our uh, end of the year administrative retreat, which is going to look a lot different this year because we are, um, contemplating what does school look like when we come back when we reopen in the fall and that is mm -hmm. that is a that's a huge yes. that's a huge undertaking um in and of itself and but as we're looking at that we also need to examine our strategic plan and the goals mm -hmm. set for 2021 and ask ourselves are they achievable in our new our new world our new setting that's true and so i think uh you know that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to marry all of these things so we don't have so we're not going in so many different directions that we're going in a singular direction as a mm -hmm. community um so if you wouldn't wouldn't mind taking a look at the strategic plan specifically focusing on the goals we've set for 2021 and ask ourselves how can the bit how can how can the business community be engaged uh with that strategic plan does that make sense okay. yes all right is that what you were thinking lou there we go yeah absolutely todd i, I think really I, I was just trying to pick topics that we could easily uh, address as a large group. And then secondary is how to dovetail it with the, the education leadership at both the middle school and the high school. 
And, and as you say, it all kind of fit, not kind of, it does fit together as a plan for the district and how we, we as businesses can support it. So yes, that's what I was thinking. All right, thank you. If the group would do that and have <clears throat> um, be prepared to engage the larger group in conversation uh, on the 9th of June, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Next item is, can we continue to interact with middle school students regarding workplace behavior and skills? Again, you submitted this, Lou. I think it's just keeping in front. Uh, again, this was a topic I think we, we as a group, uh, and taking a lot from what Bob has said in past meetings, is that if we can continue that as a focus area, it's those baby steps I mentioned earlier, where businesses and using both the uh, chamber as well as our alliance to continue to interact with that middle school group. Uh, and in particular, you know, that seventh or eighth grader who is trying to figure out what they're gonna do in the, in the next mm -hmm. three years. Uh, they get some examples by seeing some business folks who are in the real world. No, I'm just talking about myself. I'm talking about the, the everyday person that, that goes to work from you know, eight o'clock in the morning and provides a living and at the same time has enjoyment in that, in that trade or skill or, or craftsmanship. So it's not just a, a leader person. I'm really hoping that maybe we can drill down to individuals that can you know, better relate, if you will, to that middle school. So that's my thoughts. I'm not sure what everybody else is thinking. Others? Y'all are sleepy from a long weekend. <laughs> um, well, I was, I would add to that because I've always been with the thought of got to keep the middle school kids really active. I don't know what uh, Lou put in here about behavior, whether it was discipline or just the behavior of a more positive behavior towards learning. Uh, I found out uh, when I was teaching at the high school, it was many years ago, that idle hands cause discipline problems. So the busier you can keep kids with goals ahead of them that they have to achieve, then they don't have time to act up a little bit. So. But I, I, I agree with Todd too, that I'm, I'm very hopeful about the new building, that there's gonna be some hands-on skills built into that so that it leads into the career yeah. program. I was thinking too, um, even if the middle schools and high schools don't come back, couldn't teachers do like a Zoom meeting where they can interview some of the, our business people and the kids could maybe ask questions of them. Um, maybe they could speak for five or so minutes to the kids and then the kids could come back. I mean, could they do that? Yeah. Okay, I, that well, might be a way to, you know, you know, cause I, I think middle school kids, I don't know if they're really thinking about a career at, that time, but they might be. And maybe, you know, if they could interview like Lou or Bob or uh, Laura or some, you know, in different aspects, even if we have to do it with Zoom, sorry, I lost my picture. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I messed up somehow, but I'm still learning. But I'm, if I can do it, usually I would assume the teachers could do something like that. Okay. Good input. You know, so that Others? they know what skills they would need, like communication and um, cooperation and, you know, things like that, perhaps. Well, even, even uh, oral and written communication in this new environment, in the new world. What mm -hmm. does that look like? Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm, I'm not anticipating that, you know, Zoom's going to go away. Um, just mm -hmm. because we reopen things, I think I, I think we've all learned a lot, and mm -hmm. you know have learned to collaborate a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say even keeping the Zoom as an option, even if things do reopen. Because I agree. That we talked 
because we've talked a lot about how sometimes it's hard for some business leaders to get out of their businesses and come to schools mm-hmm. during, yeah, during the day. Um, you know, this, you know, mm-hmm. one of the benefits of this whole coronavirus thing has been people have gotten much more comfortable with using these type of formats. So I think you might find some business leaders that are a little more receptive and able to participate if it's in this type of format where they can take an hour or half hour, how long we're going to do it out of their day from their office and be able to communicate and, mm-hmm. you know, with students. So I, yeah, I would agree. I think it is something to keep in mind, even if we do get back to a yeah. full classroom because for me it'd be great you know and I think it would be easier for you to be on zoom in your office you could even mm-hmm. you know show the kids your workstations and the organization of just your space I, which some of them don't have that skill so I just think that's a great thing it would be great and again I apologize for losing my picture <laughs> uh-huh. I must have hit a button somehow i don't know what i would add in in this statement that i made is on behavior we're talking about the, just what what uh, uh, keith had said earlier is the ability to communicate and to you know orally present uh, a position mm-hmm. or description so exactly. uh, what i meant by workplace behavior and skills is, is strictly, strictly speaking what, how to present to a class and to mm-hmm. it, it, it explain precisely uh, some skills or skill sets about whether we can shake hands or not may not be the best, but mm-hmm. uh, by keeping eye contact and engaging each student, either individually or a group, is part of those skills in the workplace. So just mm-hmm. to further uh, elaborate. Thanks, Lou. Sure. Yeah, I, w- I would agree. Um, we were on a Zoom call last week. Laura was on the call, and one of our business leaders was reading a People magazine during the entire presentation. <laughs> and I, I was mortified for the speaker, yeah. for the rest of the group. And I thought these, these are, even though it's on Zoom, you still need to be professional and you still need to have certain skill sets. So I think it's a really great opportunity to, you know, you have to hone in mm-hmm. a little bit. Or if you're in a meeting, you can glance around or but it's so much more obvious on zoom when you're not paying attention and when you're not engaged so I think it's a really great opportunity to use to maybe start talking to our students about another level of professionalism I agree excellent points excellent points mm-hmm. and by the way when I'm looking away I'm taking notes minutes for the meeting <laughs> no judgment Todd <laughs> I, got I got you all right, so uh, the next topic, it kind of move, it fits right in with what we're talking about. You've noticed that Cindy Hardy has, the high, uh, high school counselor, has been more involved in our alliance meeting. And that's purposeful as we continue to go down the road of comprehensive counseling and what that looks like K-12 to in our environment. Of course, just a little bit of a hiccup uh, in March, like everything else did. And uh, some things kept moving forward and some things got stalled a little bit. But I know Cameron Lazar is continuing to lead that charge in terms of um, comprehensive counseling. We also, uh, in board policy and in revised code, added a piece about a plan, a four-year plan for students is, is what's required in policy and in uh, revised code. But we've been pushing all along to do a six-year plan, maybe a Mm seven-year plan in a six to 12 environment. Um, So that's one of the ways that that we can keep middle school and high school or give middle school and high school counselors the experience um, of participating with the Alliance. Are there other thoughts on what we can do to engage our, our middle school and high school counselors? What about the um, partnerships like we were doing with the principals where we can have some of them come visit businesses, businesses visit them, kind of expand that into the counselor's side? 
I like it. I was going to say the same thing. How to, how to do a uh, immersion, if you will, for a counselor in a, in a specific business or spend a day with a, a CAD CAM operator at SGS Tools just to see what that's like. And I'm just not to say that's the only business, but just an example. Or with Kathy Romito over at uh, Western Reserve. And, and you know, you, you have to be careful, uh, but still have that student or that, that career counselor, excuse me, be uh, exposed to the the business ap application so they can relate it to the student. Yeah, I know oftentimes they're, they're tight timelines on their own schedules, but you know, the chamber is a great way to interact with a number of businesses quickly and effectively and meet a lot of business leaders. And, you know, we all know the more relationships you have with other people, the more likely you are to recommend or encourage. So if a student came to the counselor and said, I'm interested in XYZ field, if they're familiar with somebody in that field, it might be a better um, coordination of efforts in, in order to get the student's exposure to that. So if they had an opportunity to interact with the chamber businesses, it'd be a quick and easy way. Thank you. Other thoughts? I have six. Well, six and I, have I would six. think that if we could find, well, I'm sure Laura has all the businesses that are, and maybe just the ones that are in the city of Colorado Falls that would be willing to work in a program if we could contact them somehow and with a little survey, say, this is what we want to try to do, or this is our goal. Would you want to somehow participate? We'll give them some options, you know, whether it just be a, like, like Patty said, maybe just a Zoom meeting into a classroom to interview Keith Veers at the bank, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe he could take an hour out of his day or a half hour, 15, 20 minutes when I taught yeah. school, 20 minutes was a, a lecture time, you know, you, <laughs> because anything over 20 minutes, it, 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 you start to lose the audience, right? Yes. So <laughs> you come to your point and then you give them a task to do and Then you come back mm -hmm. and maybe give them another 10 minutes and another task. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, if we could get a list of mm -hmm. businesses that would be willing to participate, and then work with them to develop a program of how they are going to participate. Yeah, I agree with you, Bob, because it would have to be somewhat unique. It would be very hard for me to mm -hmm. allow like a counselor to come and hang out with me for a day just because of, you know, different things that we deal with here at the bank, uh, with security and confidentiality of customer information and so forth. Um, but something like a Zoom would work out really good for me to be able to mm -hmm. sit and talk with a counselor for, you know, like I said, take an hour mm -hmm. and just kind of talk with them about what my day looks like, what we're looking for you know the skill sets and so forth needed in this particular industry and the different jobs that are available within this type of industry so yeah another thing too is when the kids are doing projects you know or or um things like that they could present those to a business besides not only their teacher but maybe a couple business people on zoom it would be nice because they could get your input as the business um their, your expertise as yeah. well. So, I mean, they could present on Zoom to you, not, you know, just their teacher, the class, but to maybe a business partner, maybe we could do something like that. Yeah. What about tying something in with like the career day? I mean, you know, we have that mm -hmm. great career day, but maybe in, instead of just the students, maybe the counselors go through and talk to some of the businesses that are participating mm -hmm. there, maybe like right before the event starts. I mean, because you have a whole bunch of businesses that are captured right there at that event. I mean, maybe something can be tailored to that as well. I mean, any thoughts on that? Well, I think as we move forward with a blend of Zoom and in person, mm -hmm. I think the opportunities are are greater because of mm -hmm. the efficiency of using Zoom. A, a counselor, a teacher can zoom right in with a business leader, have mm -hmm. the students, A, have the students talk to that 
business leader, and B, it's a great way for a counselor to come and meet with Keith Beers at his location, maybe over mm -hmm. a seven to 10 minute period versus an hour and then travel time. I think the efficiency is there. And I think mm -hmm. um, we're onto something great here. And I think also that um, once we get rolling with this workforce development page, one of the first things that'll happen is it'll A, be emailed out to our businesses. We have a mailing list of 500 um, businesses. Then the second piece in my mind, we develop a survey or a checklist. Hey, businesses, these three opportunities are available. Mm -hmm. Click here, et cetera. But the first piece, we've got to introduce it to the business community, let them get their feet wet with it, see what it mm -hmm. is, see what questions come back to us. And then the second part is we survey or offer those opportunities. And I think, again, the fact that we can we can still, the momentum is still there with business, whether it's a blend of Zoom in person, um, we, mm -hmm. a lot that can happen moving forward. Thank God for Zoom. What would we do if we mm -hmm. did not have something, if times were different and we didn't <laughs> have the technology? Exactly. Hey, I need to step away for one quick second just to check on my staff. I'll be right back. Is that okay? What I would add to this conversation is uh, incorporation of the parents. One of the things that came up mm -hmm. yes. well, a couple of quarters back, we were, we were talking about careers and how do we get the parents involved in all mm -hmm. this? I mean, again, I, as I said in my opening comments, the constituencies are large, but at the same time, taking baby steps in incorporating counselors having the ability to have uh, contacts to help parent or guardian A, B, or C uh, check out Johnny or Jane's uh, career aspirations with, with a, a business uh, person, you know, asking what are their education goals that they accomplished in their career and, mm -hmm. and what are they doing for continuing education or what are they doing uh, day to day. So the only, I think the only drawback to, to opening that up is uh, being careful about how the presentations are done and, and being careful about uh, messaging. And, and you mm -hmm. know, Todd, I'm not sure what's the right way to engage a lot of community people into the school systems, but I'm sure there's something that, that senior staff could help us with when we try to, to take it to the next level, like as we said with Laura, mm -hmm. and, and using Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking that, you know, it, engaging a group of parents or students that might have be like minded in terms of a career and just doing a panel kind of a sure. thing mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. I mean, there's, sure. there's a lot of opportunities there, I think. Mm -hmm. And to interject just a thought that I didn't say earlier, um, we talked about once this this page is up on our website, it's going to be emailed out and then the survey. The second, well, the first piece, obviously the website, the second piece, as we get rolling with this, I had planned on creating a Facebook page specifically to workforce development in Cuyahoga Falls that will be run by the chamber. Right now we run six different pages, our, our main page, a business updates page, a young professionals page, those sort of uh, our goldmine groups pages. I think this is important enough that this gets a page on its own. And we have um, like 5,000 followers and the awareness right there, people are gonna see this. And then when they get on it and they see, well, oh my gosh, I've got two kids in high school. They should be uh -huh. doing that. Or a business sees it and says, uh -huh. oh my gosh, that's a great opportunity. I should be participating. Um, Laura, is there any way that, um, I don't know if you have nonprofits and opportunities for kids to do some service on that, or is that beyond kind of? No, I like that. You know, we have internships, mentorships, um, somebody uh -huh. said apprenticeships, shadowing, okay. and because so many of the, the students all have these service yes. they have to fulfill. Um, we can incorporate service opportunities. That would be good too, because then they could click on that maybe as they're looking to do a service project in ninth grade, and then they might come across, oh, look at that, you know, over there. So, right. you know, yep. mentorships or something. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. I've added that language. Thank you. Oh, no <laughs> problem. Any other thoughts?
Okay. Moving into business advisory council plan, this will be homework as well. Uh, and like I said before, we have to develop a plan for 2021. And so I would ask you to take a look at this um, document. Do you need, y'all need it emailed back to you? Is All right. Yeah, it would be nice. And then if it's in Word, I could red line or add to be easier to add. I have it in a word, I have it in a word version that y'all can, you know, uh, provide suggestion and edits and so on and so forth. Yeah, is, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say that'd be great. That'd be great. Is that the joint statement for? No. We, okay. I, then I probably would need it emailed. Thank okay. you. Yeah, no, this is, there are two different things. Okay. Is the joint statement, one is a plan. Okay. Um, I don't know if I have oh. some terms by expiring. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So, what are your thoughts with regard to the terms? First of all, I would be willing if if you guys would have me again, because I feel it went too quick and we're kind of <laughs> just getting started. I'm willing. That's fine. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Laura. I, yeah. well, we, we set those up so you can stagger them. So you didn't mm -hmm. have to appoint seven new people at the same time. But uh, if but there's somebody new, I'll give up. I would, be, I would be willing to stay on also. Thank yeah. you. I think I'm going to have to probably drop out as much as I love the community uh -huh. and love okay. the school system. It's very difficult for me to be involved up in Cauga Falls at this point in time, uh, just with. You know, the responsibilities I have here now mm -hmm. are, are so much more than what I had at Ohio Savings. So okay. uh, I think I'll finish up my term uh, 2020, let somebody else uh, kind of okay. fill the uh, spot that can probably dedicate more time to it. But I'll still be willing to help out where I can. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So if there is a suggestion on another, uh, on, a, uh, on a candidate to fill Keith's spot, I would entertain that as well. Um, you can either tell me now or think of it and send me a message. Either Todd, one. Oh, yeah. Todd, I would, oh, I'm sorry. I would suggest Tom Haig. Okay. You were saying? Well, I was thinking that you wanted to, and I don't know, but you wanted an ophthalmology. We were looking at that. Perhaps. Well, I, my neighbor, Anne-Marie, is an ophthalmologist. She has a patent. She travels to Europe and helps children, and she does surgery on their eyes to fix their sight. I don't know if that's something now. I mean, I haven't talked to her, so I don't know if she'd be willing, but I just, maybe in the future, I don't know, or, or I could talk to her. Yes, talk to her. Okay, nope. I will. Nope. I don't know her last name. I just know Anne-Marie, but... She's really friendly down to earth. So I don't know if she'd have time, but maybe. Um, yeah, and you know, all of these positions are board appointed because it's a subcommittee of the board. And so this language right here would then be adjusted after each initial term. Uh, all terms shall be four years. So that's where we're gonna go with that. I would probably still stay as, or the superintendent would stay. I guess, mm -hmm. I guess that's me now that five more years, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Are we, are these meeting dates, um, are they okay in terms of just looking at the equivalent date in the next year? Any thoughts with that? Tuesday makes sense. So, so it's a distance from the Alliance meetings. Okay. So May, August, November, and, and February, or what are we looking at? Yeah, August, November, February, and May. Okay. I, it doesn't matter to me, so I'm fine. So Todd, for those of us that our terms are expiring, it looks like the end of June, we're done. If uh, I read that right. Yeah, well, we'll have to, we'll have to reappoint you at the board mm -hmm. level. We'll have to add that as an agenda item. Patty, mm -hmm. remember yes. that? 
Okay, I'm writing it down. Okay. I do Agenda. have a couple suggestions of business leaders. Um, I can't grab my file from across the desk here, but Todd, if I could email those individuals. Please do. Please do. And they're new people, not new business leaders, just new people that have not mm -hmm. been involved with the Alliance. I think um, that's also key to get some different, not the, just mm -hmm. different perspectives, if you will, right. from people that haven't been a part of this. Right. Well, if they're if they're going to join this group, they need to be part of the alliance too, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, they really okay. do. They, they do. do. Yeah, they I don't. Uh, operate okay. as a subcommittee of the larger group. Yeah. And did the alliance meets once a once a month. That's correct. Second okay. Tuesday at eight o'clock. And, and the suggestions I have have not served on either okay. capacity. That's the point I was trying to make. That they are just they would be new to both groups. Excellent. Okay. Sounds good. Christy, in here it talks about review of the five-year budget plan. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have you go through the five-year forecast again, but <laughs> you might want to give a synopsis of it. Okay. Yeah, we can. Um, there... <laughs> There, there was a lot going on in this last forecast, obviously, due to current world events. Um, but as many of you are probably aware, we saw a um, little under a million dollar cut from the state to finish out this year. Um, and then looking forward to next year, we don't, we don't know yet what that looks like. We, I incorporated um, in the forecast a 10% reduction in our state funding, which is about 1.6 million, close to it, a little under. Um, <clears throat> we have not seen the effects yet of um, tax collections and possible increase in delinquencies because of uh, people's economic situations. So that was incorporated into the forecast as well, um, like a two to three percent, one to right, right around two, I think it was. Um, reduction over the next two years for increased delinquencies. With that, uh, we do have a renewal levy in November. That will be our last chance for that renewal levy. Um, it expires at the end of this calendar year. We will stop receiving collections. If it is not renewed by the end of calendar year, we'll stop receiving them starting um, in January of next year. So that one is going to be important. Um, mm -hmm. Over the course of the next few years, there are actually four renewal levies. There's one this year, one next year, and two the following year. So um, those are some big items on the revenue side. Um, on the on the expenditure side, we, we do have some things. Um, obviously, all three of our um, negotiated agreements are up at the end of this year in, in um, June, July of 2020. So we will be going into negotiations with all, all three of our unions. Um, so that will be a big thing going in there, going into um, <clears throat> the expenditure side because we're 79% personnel, so salaries and benefits. We received, um, through our consortium for insurance, we received a 4.9% increase on our insurance premiums. We had recent, previously projected 8%. So that was good. We're still doing 8% going forward in the future years. Um, but on, on that side to expenditure side, we're not sure exactly what the fall looks like or what everything looks like. And if we're going to have to um, make, have other expenditures that we wouldn't normally have. Um, whether it be technology, um, which we already kind of did that in the spring. Uh, we purchased 2,000 Chromebooks so that we could get to that one-to-one -one or close to that one-to-one -one for every student. Um, that was offset. We got about $500,000 from the CARES Act, um, the federal funding. So that offset a little bit of, of what we lost in our state funding, but uh, we use that for technology um, and cleaning supplies to, to offset those expenditures that we had made um, already this year. So 
So there, there's a lot of variables in the equation. The state cut could end up being more. Um, it could end up being less um, than the 10% we've projected. We, um, and then after this year, the state goes into a new biennium budget. And depending on how the economy recovers or doesn't recover is going to impact uh, dollars available for K-12 education going forward in that next biennium budget. We have issued a blanket reduction of force notice to our teaching staff uh, because that's the only collective bargaining agreement that had a timeline associated with it. Um, for us, a 10% reduction in state funding is about $1.6 million. If that truly comes to fruition, then we've got to, um, then we, as Christy said, we're heavy personnel. And so we'll have to do some things there. Unfortunately, we've done, we've cut two to two and a half million dollars, two out of the last three years. So we are pretty much down to as much bare bones as we can. Mm -hmm. Plus we're bringing on some other Plus, we're bringing on some other positions that we think will help in this uh, new world in which we're living, you know, like homeschool liaisons for those that uh, we call them social workers, homeschool liaisons that help the kids and families connect in a, in a virtual world, uh, those kinds of things. So it's, it's, a, it's a complicated mess for us right now, as I'm, as I'm sure it is for all of you. Is that fair to say, Christy? Yeah. Yep. It was, it was a challenging, it was definitely challenging this, this time around. So, and I'm sure it will look completely different. This will probably be, mm -hmm. I would imagine the most drastic difference between two forecasts from now going into November, just because there'll be a lot of other decisions that will be made by that point. Um, you know, schooling, funding cuts, or, or you know, not, um, we don't know yet, mm -hmm. and they All don't right. either. What right. is what is the renewal levy that's coming up in November? How much? Seven point nine mills. Mm -hmm. uh, the levy committee meetings are beginning today. Actually, tonight, uh, we're continuing down the road with our golf outing, which will be the last Monday in July. Silver Lake has assured us that they can handle all the social distancing pieces that are. Uh, that are in place now and when we get there. Um, and we're going to incorporate that into our flyers. Uh, and um, so the 7.9 mils. And as Christy mentioned, this is our last chance mm -hmm. with that. We put it off so that we could do the combination levy and get, get buildings going. It is not a new tax. Uh, so it is absolutely a renewal. Um, what we need to communicate with our community is for, if for some reason this should um, fail, um, that seven mills, 7.9 mills looks like in our world about $6.2 million a year in annual revenue. And um, we, yeah, that would be next to oh, okay. operate without. Hmm. Um, and if for some reason it went down, then we'd have to bring it right back. And um, because of the impossibility to operate without that 6.2 million, mm -hmm. but then it comes back as new money. And since it would come back at new, as new money, uh, at that point, all of the reductions would be lost, like the homestead and the rollback. And, you know, it's about 10% mm -hmm. that the state covers that mm -hmm. any money, any new money after 2013 the homeowner has to cover or property owner has to cover. So that is a, uh, uh, that's an additional piece that we're going to have to communicate. So tonight in our initial meeting, I'm hoping that, you know, we, we do, we go down the road of something similar to what we did in November that was successful and we have different committees and chairs and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, you know, that'll, that remains to be seen. All right. It is 9.05, and I do want to be respectful of the hour commitment uh, that, that we try to keep. I would ask that you take a look at these responsibilities down through the rest of this document when I send it out. As you're looking at the strategic plan, also be looking at these, these particular areas and be thinking about how we 
want to construct a new plan. Again, my, my um, objective is to align all the things that we're doing. So whether I'm in administrative retreat, working with the board on goals, look at building the strategic plan or creating this, um, this plan, BAC, BOE plan. I don't wanna be going in too many different direction. It's just, it's impossible. So we kind of keep it, keep it streamlined if we can. Uh, so I'd appreciate it if you take a look at this document, I'll send it as soon as this meeting is over, compare it with the uh, strategic plan and June 9th is our next Alliance meeting. Are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? All right, hearing none, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Who? Who? Kathy. Kathy, all right. Christy? Ms. White? Aye. Mr. Seraldo? Aye, right. yes. Mr. Gruber? Yes. Ms. Mears? Yes. Dr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Petrella? Yes. Ms. Romito? Yes. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Keith. We're going mm -hmm. to I'm yes. going to miss all of you as well. I'll all still right. try to participate with the um, <laughs> business advice, the alliance, and when I can. So I, I won't can. be there on the ninth. I have to have surgery on the ninth. So I'll oh, try no. to send that over to you. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Keith, for your time. We oh, you're welcome. Appreciate it very much. <laughs> Y'all take care now. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.